In this video, I'm going to go over the raid challenge for the first encounter in the Vow Disciple raid, Swift Destruction. For many people, this will be a very easy challenge to complete, but if you're struggling, I will give you some easy tips and tricks and also some thoughts on how to do this when we get to Master Mode. First off, if you're unfamiliar with the first encounter within the Vow Disciple raid, I have another video that goes over in great detail. Watch that first before you try this challenge. In concept, the challenge is fairly simple. What you have to do in each three of the rounds of the encounter is you have to kill all three unstoppables within five seconds of each other. As a reminder, unstoppables show up every time you, show, you kill a glyph keeper with this in this encounter. So if you do this correctly, you should have a total of three unstoppables to show up each round that again, you need to stun and then take your time to destroy in tandem. It is very similar to the Vault of Glass challenge, the Gatekeeper. First, let's talk about some weapons. Now, from a weapons choice, especially on normal mode, I would stay away from things that do damage over time, unless you're very good at being careful about those. So for instance, if you put Wither Horde and the Unstoppable continuously runs into it, especially if you've stunned it, you could potentially kill it early. So I'd be careful about things like that. I'd also be careful about running things like Galahorn or items that have a lot of splash damage. Now, if you're good at ensuring that you're only gonna use that to take out ads and using it nowhere near the Unstoppable, that's fine. But the one thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna kill your Unstoppable quickly. So really from a strategy perspective, it's, it's pretty easy to do this on normal mode. You're going to do the normal things you do with the encounter. The big thing is you wanna take out the Knights that are roaming around the arena very quickly because when you take those Knights up, that's what allows you to get in the doors. Once you get in the doors, that's what allows you to figure out which Glyph Keeper to kill. It's also extremely important not to kill both Glyph Keepers, to kill just the correct one. The reason is, is that for every Glyph Keeper you kill, an Unstoppable comes up, and that will just give your key, your fire team more things to kill when they're trying to time this correctly. And obviously, you're not going to always have a perfect fire team, and you may be an LFG group. So one of the things that we did to alleviate, because again, you're not going to always have a team that knows exactly what their callouts are and are used to working together in tandem. What we did is that once we had the third person take their Glyph Keeper down, the defenders then got in the position, and they got ready to stun the champions. And the reason we did that is as a champion is stunned, first off, it's controllable. Second, it takes more damage. The other thing is in the entire fire team, let, let's say you're counting on three, two, one to shoot it. Everyone can see just in case whether all three people have has done the champion because you should see a champion's done, a champion's done, a champion's done. Once you do that, regardless of if you hear the actual, if you actually don't hear the countdown for some reason, you know, there's stuff going on the mic, you can't hear at that point, you should go ahead and kill your champions. When you do that, you'll see a champion's been defeated, a champion's been defeated. You'll see that three times and you will not see a challenge failed. If you see a challenge failed, you'll have to wipe and start the encounter over again. But once you do that, you're through the first portion of the encounter and you'll have to do this three more times. For my fire team, what we did is that we did this prior to inputting the symbols because we were fairly quick. If your fire team is not fairly quick, another thing you could do instead is put your symbols in first and then, and again, of course, stun it, continue to stun champions. But once you finish that, then there's always a break between encounters. It's probably, I don't know how long it is, five to 10 seconds where there's nothing happening in the arena. At that point, you can kill your champion. So that might be an easier way to do it if your fire team's struggling. Do this three times and then you'll finish the challenge. For master mode, obviously we don't know what master mode is gonna look like yet. However, we do know you're gonna be underpowered. More than likely there'll be modifiers like match game or other things in place. You're also probably gonna have additional champions which are going to be troublesome. So what I would recommend for that is in that case, you're probably gonna to wanna to concentrate on defensive supers to make sure the defender can stay in place and not die. You're also potentially gonna to wanna to use stasis. So this is what we did for the gatekeeper challenge that I did in a different video. You can see that if you want an explanation or an example of how to do this sort of strategy in real life. But with the new gloves on the Warlock, you should be able, again, without doing anything special build, to have two turrets up per character at any one time. And then if you do stuff for your builds, you should have turrets all over the place. And that will allow you to control the battlefield really well. For this, when you do on a master, I would do things a little bit differently when it comes to doing damage over time. I would definitely plink the, the unstoppables, take some damage. You might even wanna use things like Wither Horde or things that will take damage slowly. The other thing you're probably gonna wanna do if you struggle with damaging the unstoppables enough to take enough to kill them is that you may wanna wait until everyone's back. In other words, that last person getting that glyph, reading that glyph, that's the runner, maybe wait for them to come back because maybe you'll need that extra help before you take them down. So more than likely for that encounter, I'm probably going to recommend that you actually wait in between turns to actually take the unstoppables down. Now, 
that also means you're going to be taking unstoppable damage. So if your fire team struggles and is taking too much damage, obviously then you need to be really quick. Go ahead and take it down so that you can survive longer. That's the video, guys. Again, as we get into Master, I'll probably post another video when a, when a real strategy, but these are sort of my thoughts on the encounter itself, how to do it best with any LFG group, and also some thoughts on what it will look like in Master. If you like the video, feel free to like it, subscribe to my channel, jump my Discord, and I'll see you Guardians in the Tower.